What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. Today we're looking at when and when not to use sealant in the context of standing seam metal roofing installations. And I've got Jeff Hawk with me from the Sheffield Technical Department. Thanks for being here, Jeff. So we're looking at sealant, when and when not to use it in your standing seam metal roofing installation. Firstly, let's talk about what are the most common types of sealant, and then we'll jump into the actual installation discussion. Obviously, there's a lot of different formulations of sealant, right? You have silicones, you have polyurethanes, you have tripolymers. We're not going to, you know, be able to get into all the different breakdowns of what's what. But, you know, when it comes to the formulation of sealant, you want to make sure that you're using something designed for metal roofs. Not all silicone sealants work well with metal roofs. Not all sealants in general work well with metal roofs. So it's important to use a product that's designed for use with metal, right? You know, other types of sealants, you have hot melt butyl sealants, you have tape sealants, and it really all depends on uh, what application you're using to, to determine what sealant you're gonna use, right? It depends on how it's being applied. And we do have content about the actual formulations of sealant, and we'll leave a link in the description for that if you wanna look at the science of, of sealants. But I think the three main types we're talking about are the tape sealant, the butyl hot melt, and like gun caulking sealant. So let's talk about when you use each type of sealant on a standing seam metal roof install uh, for those three categories. Let's start with a quick one. We'll talk about hot melt, butyl sealant, or or really you know, a non-curing, non-skinning butyl sealant. You know, Usually you're gonna see that if you're doing low slope applications and it's going to be uh, injected into the inside corner of the female leg and it creates a, a seal in between the panel legs. It's usually, again, used in low slope applications. It used, it's used to pass certain uh, test standards. The possibility of water overrunning the seam is a concern. So that's, that's usually where you're going to see those types of sealants because they don't set up, they don't cure. They remain flexible and they're able to be sandwiched in between two pieces of metal and, and create that watertight seal. Tape sealants, you're gonna see that usually anytime you have a metal to metal connection. Uh, so that's gonna be anywhere, say you like you have a Z closure on a ridge or an offset cleat in a valley, somewhere that's a metal to metal connection and you have a fastener going through it. Butyl tape works by compression. When you put a fastener through a piece of metal with butyl tape, compresses the butyl tape two inches on each side so whenever you're doing metal to metal with fasteners and you have butyl tape installed, you really don't want your fastener spacing more than four inches because it only works by compression. If it's not compressed, it's not sealing. If your fasteners are further apart, dirt, grime, dust, whatever the case may be, can end up getting in between the gaps of the tape that's not compressed. And now you lose basically any type of watertight integrity that you have in those situations. Gun caulk is obviously the, the one that's probably going to be used the most as far as uh, the amount on a metal roof. You're going to use that anywhere uh, as a secondary precaution, and I stress secondary precaution, right? It's, uh, it's used as a backup. It's not used as a primary defense against water infiltration, but you're going to see sealant in between panel seams to stop water siphoning. You're going to see it on the back sides of the Z closures with the Z closures cut tight against the metal legs. You put a, put a bead of caulk behind it. Uh, as a secondary defense. You can end up seeing it more visually on situations like head walls, side walls, where you have uh, riglets or surface mount counter flashings installed. And in those situations, you know, you want it's important to make sure that you tool the sealant in where you have a long bead and something like that, because you want to make sure you work out any type of air gaps. So it creates a tight seal against what you're trying to fill. All right, so now let's look at when you should not use sealant on your standing seam metal roof install. You don't use sealant anywhere that you could use metal. You want to take and you want to close the gap or you want to fill the area with as much metal as possible. And that's what you want to be counting on as defense. And then you use, again, uh, sealant as a secondary precaution. Uh, if you've got to take and you've got a section of roof and it looks like some, you know, you're out there frosting a cake with how much sealant you've had to use, that's not the right application. The more you can count on the metal as the primary defense through how you bend it, uh, forethought when laying out a roof and how you're going to handle certain conditions can really minimize the amount of sealant you need to use. You know, the other thing you want to make sure too is uh, a lot of sealant doesn't react well with UVs. You know, sunlight will break down the sealant and cause it to fail over time. So it's important, you know, when you are using sealant, most of the time you shouldn't even see it unless you get into like that surface mount counter flashing or regular type situations. You shouldn't even really see the sealant that's being installed because it should be behind something 
um, you know, protecting it in that scenario. You know, another thing to consider too when you're using sealant is, you know, how fast it sets up the curing time. Curing time is going to be affected by different temperatures and, and elevations. For example, something we see a lot, uh, guys will go and they'll they'll seal up the sides of a Z closure and then the sealant falls because it didn't cure fast enough. It's being used in a vertical application. And now at the tops of the Z closures, you have holes, right? Where the sealant isn't, isn't doing its job. These are all things to consider. You know, if you, you have a long run of ridge cap and, you know, you take and you seal it up, before you put that piece of metal on, you know, double check and make sure the sealant stayed where it's supposed to, and then go back and add as necessary. If it's not there, it's obviously not going to provide any protection. Uh, Sheffield Metal sells uh, gun caulking sealant, butyl tape uh, for their applications. Tell me a little bit about, you know, Sheffield's products. The tube sealant we use is a NovaFlex metal roof sealant. We recommend it for everything. We use it on all of our weather type warranties. It's, it's a known product to us and it's known to perform. Comes in as many different colors as you can think of. Personally, I prefer clear. It's a color you can stock. And if you know if you don't have a certain scenario like a surface mount or head wall flashing, where it really shouldn't even be visible, so it shouldn't really matter what color it is. But they do provide them all. Um, you know, some people you know that's really important too. Uh, butyl tape. I think we use a couple different providers of butyl tape. But the big thing to me with butyl tape is the size of the butyl tape. You don't want to use something too thin. You don't want to use something too narrow. You want to be able to provide a good a good seal. Uh, you know, if you're going to bother putting it on, you might as well put something on that's going to work, right? So uh, our standard size butyl tape is 3 sixteenths inch thick by 7 eighths inch wide. Most of the scenarios I talked about when it comes to different trim pieces, you know, like Z closures and things like that, it's usually got a one inch lip that you're going to fasten through the metal with. So that's seven eighths provides, you put it on the back, you can screw through it. And when it compresses, it's not all oozing out of the front of your Z closure and things like that. You're not going to really have any problems with aesthetics. Uh, you know, the other cool thing about the three sixteenths inch is that if you make your Z closure, the same height as the staining seam. So if you're doing an inch and a half mechanical, you make your Z closure an inch and a half tall, you set it on top of that 3 16 butyl tape, gives you just enough room to put a cap on without leaving a huge gap at the top of your Z closures where you're gonna have a big hole. All these little things that we try to take into consideration when uh, you know picking products that we're using and, and, and why we use the ones we do. Thanks very much, Jeff. Really appreciate the information. If you have any questions, please comment down below. We do have other videos where you can learn a little bit more about uh, NovaFlex sealants, uh, butyl tape, when to use them, how to use them. I'll link those in the description below. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.